Hi, today is day 143. Um, <clears throat> I have to think about why I have been avoiding making these recordings. Uh, I think it's a couple of things. Number one, when I started posting them last year um, in the first half of my cycle with this balloon, the Orbera gastric balloon, a uh, six month program and I'm 143 days into it. So I'm in the last two months now. Um, I, um, when I was posting them, I noticed that it was like a lot. And I was like, this is a lot of information. It's a lot of video. Maybe I don't need to do a recording every day. Maybe I can do a, re a recording every week. And then I was gonna switch to every Saturday because I started on a Saturday. The balloon was inserted in my stomach on a Saturday. Um, <clears throat> but then things would happen that would be off the Saturday and I'd want to make an update and then Saturday would come around and I would not make an update. Um, that's the first thing. The second thing is I've been kind of sickly kind of ever since I got back. It's a little bit weird. Like I've been sickly, um, <clears throat> I've been sickly, <laughs> I've been sickly since I got COVID in 2000. 21 the first time before vaccine um ever since then i get sick more often and i get sicker every time i get sick um that's a side note but um since being on the balloon like i feel like i've had lots of weekends where i, I just was like knocked out you know i like preserved my energy to get through the work week and then the weekend would come and i would be just kind of like Bleh. um then I went on a big vacation with my family, my partner and my mom, and we did a lot. And I also had to work through that vacation. So the vacation was not really a vacation because I did not get a lot of rest. Um, excuse me. Um, so when I came back, um, I thought, well, when I came back, I had to go right to work. Like I came back on, if I, I if I came back on a Sunday, I went to work on the Monday. Or if it was a Monday, it was I was back at work on a Tuesday, whatever it was. Like I was the next morning um, at my desk and I was at my desk early. I got in at 2 a.m. for my flight and then I was at my desk at 7 a.m. There was no rest. And then it was boom, 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 the rest of January. We're now in February. Things have slowed down a teensy, weensy, weensy bit. <laughs> Only because I finished the major project that I was working on and my job, but the rest of my regular workload is still there. Um, so I'm tired, <laughs> I'm tired, I'm exhausted. And I think because of that, I kind of have stayed sickly. So when I came back from Kazakhstan and Turkey, I had the flu. <coughs> I worked through it, but I had the flu. And because I worked through it, and because I had, because it, it was like flu season, and because ever since COVID, I get sicker longer. I had the flu for about three weeks. Like I was back out in the world, but I was not okay after two weeks. I really had the flu for three weeks and maybe some change, let's say three weeks. Um, and I'm over it now, but every time I get sick, there's like a little lasting piece that stays with me. So when I got COVID the first time, it was that my eye would water and it's still like it's watering. It just was watering a minute ago. Like it waters all the time. Um, <clears throat> I get, um, this is gross. So, like I keep phlegm or something. Like, I can't get all the phlegm out. And so I get this like post nasal drip thing. And that has stayed with me since the flu. Like it's just, everything leaves sy um, symptoms. After I got the flu this last time, I had a cough that would not stop. Like I was coughing and when I say coughing, I mean like uncontrollably and like guttural hard coughing that people would look at me and be like, why are you here? And I'd be like, I'm actually, I'm fine. It's just, it's a cough that won't go away, but I'm, I'm okay. That cough hung around for easily over a month. And I talked to other people and they said, yeah, man, I had the flu too. And I had got this cough and it took me weeks and weeks for that cough to go away. <laughs> I have runny nose like this. It's just, so I just... I'm sort of always sickly. Um, and so by the time a Saturday rolls around, I'm knocked out. What I haven't mentioned yet is that first time I got COVID, I got insane exhaustion, exhaustion that I have never felt before in my life. Like in my life, I have never felt exhausted like that. And um, <clears throat> that has kind of stayed with me. It's been really hard. 
um, I feel so lethargic sometimes. Um, and you, you know, I look at myself and I'm like, you know, what's wrong? I blame myself. Like, what's wrong with you? Like, you can't get up and do stuff. And it's like, yeah, some of it is maybe mental, but a big chunk of it is that I like, there's just, there's a heavy exhaustion that stayed with me since COVID and I fight through it for so many things, but it's there and I'm, it's there and it's, and, and the struggle to fight it every day is also exhausting, right? So <clears throat> dealing with all of that means that by the time Saturday rolls around, I'm exhausted and I find that like, I'm barely, I'm barely kind of coherent before Saturday mid afternoon evening I'm just like Saturday morning I'm just flat out laid out and just just resting um and so that cut into the whole idea of like oh I'll do like a peppy Saturday video each week and do like seven day updates um that got in the way <clears throat> thirdly what got in the way of doing these updates um is you know this progress is up and down it's um some days I have a really great number to reveal. And some days it's like the number went back up. Some days the number has stayed flat. And I did my time in these video logs um, coming on and complaining about where the where the number was or that it wasn't moving or that it was going up. or um, And I, I just don't know if I want to keep repeating that. Yes, everyone knows it's frustrating when you are trying to lose weight and you don't. Whether it's that you plateau or that you go up in weight. All of that is frustrating. It's it's um it feels humiliating. I know that you know this is a tiny platform that barely anyone is there, but there are a few people who are somehow watching these videos or watching some of them. Um, so that makes it public, and that means it's a public humiliation that I'm going through when the numbers aren't just constantly going down in a happy, happy way for a weight loss journey. Um, it's hard. It's very, very hard. It's hard. Um, this weekend, today is Monday. That's the 143rd day with a balloon. Yesterday, I was like, oh, I didn't do another recording yes, uh, on a Saturday. It's Sunday. Let me do a recording this weekend. And I walked by the mirror and I saw my, my face and I was like, I hate the way my face looks. I really don't like the way my face looks because it shows the weight gain. I love the way my face looked looked when I got when my weight was when my weight is is getting down in the right zone. My face actually has a different shape, and um, when I see my face shape change, it's 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 um, it's like you can avoid. You can avoid that you are gaining weight and therefore failing if you're in pajamas all day because you're at home. You can avoid that you're gaining weight and therefore failing if you don't get on the scale. You can't avoid it when you literally see it in your face. And um, and I had that moment yesterday and so I was like, oh, I'm definitely not making a video now. No one needs another video of me crying on here about something that I have control over. Um, but that's the realities of, of any weight loss journey, whether it's a gastric balloon or any other gastric medical intervention or just you dieting and exercising or trying the million other kinds of different ways to lose weight there are out there. Pills, potions, all, whatever you're doing. Um, it's hard um, when it's not going to plan. Um, so, but, but what I wanted to talk, so that's just an explanation that I wanted to give for why um, these videos decreased in quantity. I really wanted to do a daily blog for six months. Um, but I found that what happens is what I, what's happening right now is that I get on and I talk a lot and now I've got a 30 minute video, which is too much to do every day. And it's too much for anyone to watch or listen. And also because the purpose of, of, of vlogging this is that I want to also be able to kind of look back and see this journey at the end, if it's successful. And also if it isn't, and I want to do it again, what do I learn to change to help it be a better and bigger success the next time? How do I fix what failed, right? How do I fix it, tweak it, um, triage what went wrong and make it different for next time? If these videos are 30 and 45 minutes, I'm not going to sit back and watch um, 180 of those. Um, 
<clears throat> so I try to wait and see if I have something significant or different to say. And that's not every day. But today I do. I've brought this up kind of briefly jokingly in the past, but I'm bringing it up today because I'm changing tact. Um, Cause it got so bad this weekend. So I had started, um, I had wanted to uh, make sure that I was getting as close to 80 grams of protein a day as I can. I've talked about that before here. Based on my weight, that's a good amount of protein. Um, the key to weight loss when it comes to, um, particularly these gastric kind of interventions, but really any kind of diet change, and diet change is really how you're gonna get the weight loss done, is um, to up your protein. It, it changes so much of how your body works and looks. If you work on upping your protein versus like avoiding fat or sugar, or those kinds of things. Yes, there are things you can do there too. But for me, it was um, get protein, get protein, get protein. And I was a person who did not get a lot of protein before my balloon. I was very much a carb eater, carbs and veg. That was my thing. Protein was like a side thing. And I didn't never, I didn't ever think about how many grams I needed a day of protein. When I realized it was 80 grams, it, I, I said, whoa, okay. And I started with these drinks because I started at the very beginning of, the, um, of this weight loss journey with, these, with this uh, gastric balloon. And at the very beginning with the gastric balloon, you have to drink clear fluids for the first three days. Um, and so I got a bunch of these. This is 20 grams of clear liquid protein. Can drink two of these a day, very good. Three of these a day, wow. Four, oh my God, you hit your mark. Four has never happened a day. Because <laughs> as wonderful as this is, um, it's crazy, crazy sweet. It tastes like sugar, it tastes like Kool-Aid with three cups of sugar added to it. It's, it's insanely sweet, it's so sweet, it's hard for me to drink, but it tastes a thousand times better than those creamy, um, those creamy protein drinks that you get everywhere that for me are just gross. They taste slimy to me. I don't like the flavors and I don't like um, the texture of them. So I got these and I was like, this is cool. I drink them super, super cold. So not only straight from the fridge, but I also will sometimes put some ice cubes in it just to make it very, very, very cold. But this is a ton of plastic, which I didn't really want in my life. It's kind of hard to avoid that now with this diet, um, with this even with my veganish lifestyle, but definitely with the protein drinks and all the extra, it's hard to avoid it. Um, also, it creates a lot of, um, of waste. Like suddenly I have every week, like dozens of these guys to toss out. Mm, don't love that. So my mom visited a few weeks ago and she was like, I'm going to bring you some vegan protein because you told me about your thing and you have to drink protein and blah, blah, blah. So I don't know if the writing is backwards, but it says uh, Vega or Vega protein made simple, um, has no stevia, has eight ingredients, no gums. It's 15 grams of protein. Sorry, that's my finger. I painted my fingernail while I had a Band-Aid on, which is why, <laughs> which is why only half my fingernail is painted. That was not like a, a style I was trying to do. Um, 15 grams of protein. Um, strawberry banana flavor. This sat in my kitchen cupboard for weeks because I was like, Ugh, protein drinks, like whatever. So I started ordering protein drinks because there is a place near me. I'll just drop the brand name. I'm not endorsing it. It just, it's just, I'm talking lifestyle and it's my life. Very close to me is um, a place called Juice Generation. Juice Generation does, um, juices and I would use I used to uh, order juice generation at my job for um, straight vegetable juices and fruit juices when I saw that they had protein drinks I was like oh hey and they have a nice acai bowl so my weekend treat would always be um, an acai bowl which was probably like 20 grams of protein so it's nice peanut butter and stuff in it and um, they had a, like a mega protein smoothie that was 54 grams of protein. And I would drink that, like that would be my Saturday morning in bed breakfast while I'm chilling and kind of just laying there trying to rest thing or Sunday morning, whichever morning I could get that together. Um, and I would love it because I'd be like, if I eat nothing else today, I know I've hit like, I've definitely gone past the good into the wow and maybe even the goal of my protein intake for the day. However, 
that protein that protein uh, smoothie was made with whey protein w h e y whey protein whey protein has a whole lot of lactose in it and i would get so insanely gassy i mean i i'm talking farts that would like blow your mind and they were funky that's just the reality like those whey farts mm, i have now learned that protein farts are a beast but the whey protein farts Okay, crazy. So I stopped doing that. Um, but I also stopped doing that because I thought, you know what? Let me try this good old vegan thing that my mom got me. It's already in my fr already in my, my, my kitchen. Let me try it. So, so I'll just make a smoothie. I've got some fruit here. I'll just make a smoothie and I'll try it. I did and it was delicious. And I was like, okay, well, that saves me from spending $20, $20 every weekend on this, this you know, fart machine that I was getting from Juice Generation. So I started doing that every morning, making my own smoothie. And then during the day, during the day I would try to eat protein in other ways, maybe other protein drinks or other protein rich foods. But I would always start my day with one of these. And I would, since it was 15 grams, I would try to put three scoops in for 45 grams so that I started my day already over the half towards the goal of my 80 grams, right? But what that meant was that I then had to start shopping and keeping enough fruit around, fruit and veg, to make my smoothie. So my regular shopping started to look like this. And this is a bag of frozen fruit, frozen berries, frozen, what is this, mixed fruit, um, frozen spinach. Um, there's frozen blueberries in here, frozen strawberries, frozen mango. Like I just started buying that. Now this giant bag, this was the latest delivery. There's about five, maybe even six of those bags in my hallway filled with frozen um, fruits and veg because these bags look big, but you end up eating, you end up going through them pretty quickly. So that bag, that those five or six bags in my hallway will probably last me a week and a half. But here's the thing. Oh, so I, so I was using this with those delicious, I was getting gassy again, but it wasn't terrible. Um, and I thought, well, you know, I don't know what's happening. Maybe it's just me. I ran out of this, right? When my mom gave it to me, she had used some, so it wasn't fully full, but you also run out of this. You're using three scoops at a time. Um, so then I went and bought this. It took a long time for me to decide what to buy in the store near me. I wanted it to be ideally, um, vegan plant-based because i wanted to avoid that way um w-h-e-y i want to avoid anything that had that animal protein even that milk protein in it um and i got and i wanted something that had a bunch of protein per scoop because i wanted to do it in the morning and then not have had, i didn't want to do it at, in the evening because um it's not labor intensive but like it's a little to do to make it it's a whole cleanup to do it um and i didn't want to be doing that at night also it's a lot of fruit. And so I was wondering if it would be healthy to be eating a bunch of that kind of sugar, fruit sugar, um, right, you know, so close to the time I'm going to bed. So I really liked doing it in the morning um, and then trying to get the rest of my protein in from other sources. I didn't want to do this twice a day. So I got, so I wanted something that had a big pack. I don't know if you can see, this is 21 grams. That's what sold it for me. This had the highest gram of um, protein in a scoop. This was plant-based, plant-based protein, 21 grams. And then it says here, five grams of prebiotic fiber. Fiber is a big thing ever since my colonoscopy <laughs> last year. And the doctor saying to me, fiber, 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 like we all need a lot more fiber. Make sure to be adding fiber to your diet. And also if you get this balloon, make sure to, 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 uh, to find ways to keep fiber happening in your, in your systems, especially since it's going to be this thing blocking your digest digestive tract. Um, you want your colon to have as much fiber going down with your food as you can. It's like a lubricant helps things move on through, right? Um, and only one gram of sugar. Important too, because these things turn out to be really sweet. Um, I was happy to start adding a lot more veg. I have broccoli in here too, I think, that I add to it. Doesn't necessarily cut down too much on the sweetness, um, but enough. And then the last thing was, all of these protein things have a flavor. 
I really wish they made a lot of them flavorless because I don't want the extra flavor, but they're all flavored. And a lot of the flavors are vanilla chocolate. That's it. And I don't want, I didn't want either one of those. I think I lucked out with the one that my mom gave me that was banana and strawberry flavor because it actually complemented the fruits and veg that I was putting into the, the smoothie. Um, the chocolate has a fake nasty chocolate um, flavor to me. And the vanilla is um, also very fake and super sugary to me. And so I never like vanilla flavored uh, protein. So I got this because this said, hey, peanut butter flavor. Um, yeah, peanut butter flavor. And I thought, okay, peanut butter flavor. Well, I love acai bowls that have, you know, like frozen acai smoothie with granola and some nuts and strawberries and bananas topped, you know, on top of it and a nice big scoop of, of, of peanut butter kind of in the center. I love that flavor. So maybe this will make all of my smoothies like an acai bowl. That's what I thought. That was a mistake. Um, but furthermore, I got this because it also said vegan, no soy ingredients, gluten-free, non-GMO. All the things I wanted to hear. So I thought this one's not gonna give me those nasty farts. This one's gonna make me feel fuller because it's got a lot more protein in it. And it's got peanut butter, which may be a little less sweet than the, than the chocolate and the vanilla flavors that were all on the shelves where I was looking. I quickly looked at what the proteins were in it and it said cleaner ingredients, powders made from pea protein, organic peanut flour, organic brown rice, organic chia seeds. So I saw that and said, okay, there's no way there, W-H-E-Y. There's no way there. So this will be perfect for my body. I will digest this great. Well, so I bought this giant container of it about a week ago. And every day I have made a smoothie from that with my vegetables and with my frozen vegetables and um, and fruits. And then I usually will toss in um, half of a fresh banana. And I have been lighting it up. I have been lighting it up so much I can't stand to be around myself. These farts are so insane. And it's like they don't stop. Um, that I've Googled it. Like I had to Google and be like, is it, is it me? Like, is it, and basically any kind of protein you get, and there's no protein that's not going to give you farts in these pow in these powder things. Basically you can try, um, you can try, uh, how is it called? Whey, W-H-E-Y, whey isolate. Whey isolates seem to have a little less of the stuff in the lactose in whey that gives you gas but they will still give you gas. They just are less gaseous for us. That's information I got off of a lot of um, bodybuilding websites, a lot of nutritionist websites, and a lot of websites specific to gastric, um, gastric medical interventions. Usually people who have a sleeve um, <clears throat> are talking about the protein, but it, the same applies for um, the gastric balloon. Um, so now I have this gigantic case. Well, yesterday, I was in bed most of the day because I was still, again, exhausted. I went to a rehearsal on Saturday and I came home from that rehearsal. The rehearsal was maybe an hour and a half, two hours max. I came home and I was exhausted. Like I was ugh, falling down exhausted. So I spent the day in bed on Sunday. I made a smoothie for myself and I drank it slowly. And I've learned with these, especially once I got this one with this peanut flavor a week ago, um, it just doesn't taste as good. So it actually takes me longer to drink um, the amount I'm making, which usually ends up to be two like short glasses. Um, it takes me longer to drink that. Um, by the way, so when I make these, it's 21 grams per scoop and I'm putting two scoops in there. Again, I'm trying to get over half of my daily allowance or daily goal of protein in the morning. So in the morning, I'm getting minimally 40 plus grams of protein through this but that gas is it's heinous um i was in the office last week a couple of days and i was having to get up and walk away when the gas was coming and i was having to get up and walk away often
that's how often it was. It was how much it was coming. It was coming fast and furious. Like I'd pass gas and be like, oh God. And the second later it would start again. And I'd be like, oh my God, like it's just cereal. It's just cereal farts. It's just cereal farts. You can't stop it. Um, even if I eat nothing, even if I eat nothing, this stuff creates a funk. Your gas is nasty. My gas was nasty. So after going through a week of that um, this morning, I and I ordered all of this fruit again for my new week because I ran out of fruit and veg. Last night I was like, okay, I got to make this thing tomorrow morning. Because you have to plan your day around it because not only do I get the gas, but of course gas causes bloat. So I'm getting that massive bloat. Not the crazy bloat I got from eating the protein fresh, right? Not, not from eating like actual animal protein, uh, meat, chicken, beef, uh, fish, eggs. Um, that bloat was, um, took a while to, uh, to set on and it, and it got really, really big and really hard. And then later gas started with the, with this powder protein, it's just gas immediately and it's gas all day and even all night. And it's funky. Like it's just loud, rude, offensively smelly. It's all bad. Um, so with this, um, I just kind of looked at myself this morning as I was like going in in the kitchen to get ready to make it. And even at last night as I was thinking about, okay, tomorrow morning I got to make the, make the juice. I'll make it early. I'll be working from home. So I'll make it early and then like drink a lot of water, hopefully try to flush my system so that if the gas is coming, any, any food that's in the way can start getting out of me. That's a lot to think about and a lot to be planning. So this morning when I went in the kitchen, I just said, you know what? No. I'm not doing it. No, I'm not doing it. I will do that maybe as a weekend thing, but I, I can't live a life with that gas. Also, what helped me come to this decision is that last night was when I really was like, I got to Google this because this feels so extreme. And when I saw like, it's a massive topic for anybody who is using protein on a daily basis, which happens to be people in our community in the gastric world, but also a lot of bodybuilders. And they all said it. There's so many articles, so many forums, so much information, all the same, which basically was if you about, if you go on protein, if you're going to do pro, um, powder protein get ready for that fart life just get ready it's it's going to happen and live with it and you may it, it, it you know find times to be alone and let it go um it's you gotta live with it so i just said i don't have to live with it i'm not living with it so i am back ladies and gentlemen to my clear <laughs> to my clear um protein this is only 20 grams, so if I drink this, I've got to have several of these a day, which means I'm going to create three to four bottles of plastic waste. Um, I have not found another company that does these um, in any kind of sustainable material, but, um, but I have to get my protein. It's important. And um, I got to figure out the flavor. So I actually went to this company's website. This happens to be Premier Protein. I'm sure there are other companies who do clear clear protein drinks. I just, this is the one I have found easiest and most quickly every time I've looked. They deliver on lots of popular platforms that sound like a rainforest, if you know what I mean. Um, but I'm sure they deliver on lots of others that like they, they're everywhere. They're, it's kind of ubiquitous. So I was like, okay, let me start with these. And they're affordable. I think a, a, a pack of 12, 10 or 12, I have to look again if the thing is like 24 bucks. Is it great? No, but is it doable? I will do it. Um, so I'm back to this. I am back to drinking um, the clear protein because this did not cause me gas. The only thing is it's crazy sweet. Even just that little sip, it's sweet. I don't like the crazy sweet. It's really like a very, it's like, it's like sugar has been added to an already incredibly sugar water drink. Or like, if you think of like an agua fresca, but you add like a ton of extra sugar unnecessarily. It's, it's, it's like that, but it's protein. So I'm going to go back to these. I just ordered a bunch. Um, but now I got to figure out <laughs> what to do with 7,000. Uh, uh, seven, I don't know. I mean, there's just so much here. There's all of this. I got 50, 11 bags of, of, of frozen fruit to, to manage. 
of course I can do something with it. The crazy thing with the frozen fruit was also that my even my freezer was running out of space. Like the last time I had all the fruit, the frozen fruit delivered, I was having to like you do Tetris in my freezer to fit them all in and then some didn't fit at all and I was like the, I, you know I'll put these in the fridge and I'll just start eat, you know making these smoothies right now um so that's what I want to say today on day 143 um my love affair with powder um with powder protein is over I am going back to liquid protein and it's got to be the clear because I still hate the um the um the creamy liquid protein drinks they're disgusting to me but this one is it's doable it's like medicine i gotta gulp it down and not think about it but um, i'm doing it i did find out that the company has another flavor this is tropical punch they have a flavor that's peach i'm hoping that the peach flavor is less sugary but it does still have the 20 grams of protein um, only one gram of carbohydrate, zero gram of sugar, zero added sugars, um, zero percent fat, has a lot of sodium-ish, 160 grams of milligrams of sodium, but um, a good amount of, a fair amount of sodium to eat that's not overdoing it um, is about 200. I think they say Americans should have below two, two, two sorry, 2,000. Americans should have below 2,300 milligrams of sodium a day if they if they can try to make that happen. That's a good goal. So I'm trying to thinking a little bit under that, knowing that I'll pass it. So I try to think of 2,000 gram, milligrams of sodium a day. Um, so I look at this. If I drink four of these a day, I'm well under my 2,000. Um, so I'm okay. Um, that's where I sat on day 143. I had to, <laughs> I had to say no to the powder protein. I will figure out what to do with all of these bags of fruits um, and, and, and frozen veg. I will figure it all out. Of course, I can use those in different recipes and things, and then it will be fun. And in salads, of course. Um, but I do really have um, five or six bags of all of those out there. So it's funny. I'm gonna have to find a way to cook all of those soon um but that's what it is i'm back to um i'm back to clear protein here's the other thing i wanted to say i forgot these videos get so long um the other reason that i decided to kind of stop with this powder protein i don't know if it's because of the bloating caused by that protein um and then that constant gas but two things I ain't lost, not only have I not lost weight, my weight went up. My weight went up, so I'm back over 200 pounds. I had gotten down to 190, 197. I am way back, I'm back at 206, I'll just be honest. I wanna cry when I say that, but I'm back at 206. I'm not blaming that on the protein, I'm definitely not. What I am saying though is, um, I did lose weight when I was drinking these. I did not lose weight when I was drinking these. And I don't know if maybe I'm getting a lot more calories than I think when I'm putting all these fruits and veg in these in these smoothies. I don't know if, if because I get so bloated and I'm feeling so full, if that is also making me heavier on the scale. I don't know. The second thing I wanna say about these is, you know, whenever you do these protein shakes, they don't, they, no one advertises them really this way, but this is how a doctor will tell you Then these things are a meal replacement. That means you don't have a meal right after these. They aren't a drink for, or right, for your meal. Like they're a meal replacement. So that's one less meal you have a day when you're, when you're, when you're, when you're drinking these, right? Um, I'm not sure that I adhered to that. I never ate directly after drinking these because you do get really full, but I have had this in the morning and then gone in the office and had, you know, a salad at like 11 and then maybe pasta or something at like one or two. Um, and then in the evening come home and eaten something else. like. I found that I got away from my good listen to my body habits on this than I did. I, I got less good. I got I got worse about managing my body. And the managing of my body is really listening to my body, like 
letting my body lead with hunger before I reach for something to put in my mouth, reach to or go into the kitchen to start cooking something, start opening cabinets to start finding something to snack on, really waiting for hunger to lead that versus just boredom. And when I was drinking these regularly, the ones I made, the ones I was ordering, the ones I would get outside, you know, you pass a, a street car and say, oh, it's a protein drink and you would drink it. I lost a little bit of sight of that. I will say they do make you feel full, um, but because they also gave me all this other discomfort, I got separated from, from what I feel because I felt so uncomfortable. And so later on, when I would start eating something, I was not, I, there was, I could, I could not connect to whether I was eating because I was hungry or eating because I was bored or having some kind of other emotional thing going on. Or if I was eating because I subconsciously was like, oh, you know, things are finally settled. Let's have something to eat. My, whether my body was saying, okay, things are finally settled. Let's pass something else down the track. I lost control of that. And I was able to easily hear, listen, follow my body when I was on that clear stuff um, than with this. So I'm going to stop. And that's the last thing I want to talk about really briefly is um, meal replacements for me have always been a very dangerous part of diet culture um, because I my brain doesn't work like that. My brain doesn't work like, oh, this is a re this drink replaces a meal. And so I won't have a meal later because a meal to me is not just the things you put in your mouth. Right. A meal to me is there's something else about it, even if I'm having a meal by myself, but it's like the preparation of it, the sitting down of it, the, you know, it's, it's definitely like a fork and a knife and putting something in my mouth on a utensil. Um, a drink never, ever does that for me, <laughs> for me. It just doesn't. It's, uh, maybe that is something that my mind can adjust to, but I only have two more months and I don't want to, I'm not keen to bring in a new culture for myself to, to adjust to very fast when I already had something down that was working for me that was sustainable. So I'm going to go back to the other thing. I just want to say something that's kind of funny for me. You know, when I say like a drink is a drink never represents a meal to me. It's a psychological thing. It's kind of like in the beginning when I first ate sushi, it took like I've had sushi now probably for like 20 years. And it the, for the first time in my life last year, I had a, a sushi, like a small sushi meal. And I was like, oh, oh, that was delicious. And that was enough. That was a meal. But I've been eating sushi for 20 years. And for 20 years before that, I had always said sushi is an appetizer. Like, don't tell me sushi. Like sushi, if you bring me a thing of six little, six little pieces of sushi, you have brought me an appetizer. I have always thought that. And then like last year, for the very first time, I ordered sushi and I was sitting here I can't remember if I was alone or if somebody was with me, but um, I had got that and maybe like a soup, maybe like a ramen soup or something. And I ate that. I think the key was gastric um, doctors will, will, will underscore this and say, yeah, that part. I think the key was that I ate it really slowly. I think I might've been alone and I was reading a book. And so I was sitting at the table and was kind of reading. And so I was really like eating a piece of sushi every like couple of minutes, right? Instead of like, um, um, um. And so by the time I got to the end of this little container of six pieces of sushi, I was like, mm, that was delicious and pulled away from the table and forgot that I had this, this, um, you know, this tub, basically this big container of ramen soup too. And I laughed at myself and I was like, huh, that's the very first time that sushi has actually been the meal. And it was not that I had eaten before. Um, and so I wasn't hungry. I actually was hungry when I ordered. Um, it wasn't that I didn't want to eat anything else. Like everything I ordered, I loved. I ordered kind of my favorites. The ramen soup that I got was one of my favorites. So I was, ex I was excited to eat it. I just, um, it was the first time that that little six pieces of sushi was the meal and not the appetizer. It took 20 years for me to get there. So it's going to take me 20 years <laughs> to get to a point where a drink is the meal. I, I just, it's my, my brain cannot wrap itself around that. And so these things are supposed to be replacement meals. They'll never be replacement meals for me. I will always consider them as like a tasty dessert or a tasty, yummy, sweet thing before your, before your meal. I just will always, my, I'll always want to continue my regular eating day after that. And that's why I think going back to the regular old clear liquid um, is going to be the answer for me. 
Um, so I hope that after another after a week on this and my the 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 new case of them I think comes in next week. Um, I hope I will start seeing weight loss again um, with this because I hope that being back on this kind of protein um, helps me get back in line with my eating goals, which are. You know, what the scale says is secondary. What's important is that I feel good in my body every day. And these guys do not make me feel good in my body every day. These guys make me feel fat, bloated. I'm constantly holding in a fart <laughs> when I'm outside in the world, which then just makes my stomach bloat out more. My love handles came back on these guys. So uh, so, so this is gone. I'm out, of, I'm out of the protein powder world. Unfortunately, I'm out of it after I bought a big container. So somebody in my life is gonna get gifted that container, which is probably how I got gifted this container from my mom. <laughs> I have to ask her. She probably was like, mm, I don't need this in my life. Let me give it to my daughter. So I don't need this in my life. I'm going to give this to someone else who can use it. Any bodybuilders in, in this part of New York City, come find me. I will give this to you. Um, so that's my update. Day 143, I have gained weight. Um, I'm in the last two months of this. So uh, I, I'm in the home run and I, 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 I want this to be a home run. I'm coming around the bend now, and I don't want to ruin, muck up my progress um, by uh, starting bad habits or letting go of my good ones. So back to focus, back to focus. We're trying to cross the finish line with this gastric balloon by, uh, and be, I'd love to be in the early 190s. Ideally, of course, I'd be in the 170s. I don't know that I'm gonna get there, but I'd like to get back into the 190s and then get down from there into early 190s, close into the close to the 80s. That would be a success on the balloon for me because that would represent 40 pounds of weight loss. Um, one last thing I want to say: um, <laughs> the timing of this balloon. Uh, I don't want to cry. The timing of this balloon. Um, in September for six months was so that I would look great for my wedding with my fiance, which was planned to be an elopement. Just the two of us on our favorite beach in Turkey. And obviously Turkey is going through a very, uh, through a devastating time right now. Um, and, um, it's obviously not the time to go there and try to have a um, a beach wedding. Um, and in fact, the area where we were going is now um, solely focused on housing displaced people and and um, taking care of people who have whose lives have been destroyed um, by the earthquake in Turkey and Syria. So um, my tears, by the way, are for that situation. Um, we can elope at any time, at any place, um, but it will not be uh, next month and it will not be there, it will not be there next month. Um, we do want to get married there because that is our paradise. Um, <laughs> it's a beach in, um, it's a beach in the, I'll just say it's in the Kalkan region. I don't wanna give too much information. It's in the Kalkan region. It's a wonderful beach that, is so unassuming but you get there and it's absolute paradise and uh, many people in turkey even know that beach because it's absolutely stunning it's a small cove and it's like a film set it's it's gorgeous and every time we're in that area we stop and go there um and uh that's where i wanted us to elope and he when he you know when he heard that he was like oh my god yes that's that's the perfect spot um it's what we wanted um so i got this balloon to lose weight to look good on that beach um for him for us for our photos <laughs> for everything um obviously there are far more important things to focus on in that area that we are um trying to give our time and money to um and this will be a back burner that we will do next year <laughs> so maybe i'll start a new video series and i'll do the balloon again for one year because i was interested in doing that and um Maybe maybe a year from now we'll do it there. Um, or a year from this March we'll do it there. Um, with Turkey in a better place and um, the many people who are displaced um, having been able to restart their lives. <sighs> Out of this horror. Uh, okay. 
it's impossible to talk about that massive loss of life and not feel so um, heartbroken. Not a great way to end um, a silly video about losing weight, but um, this is reality. Life, that's, that's life, life and death. Um, and that's a part of this. So, uh, <clears throat> uh, yeah, it's day 143.